Everything you think you know about the Alabama IVF Supreme Court case is wrong. I'm Scott Ott with Bill Whittle and Stephen Green. And gentlemen, this episode of Right Angle is brought to you by the members at BillWhittle.com, as always. Uh, Bill, Steve, I started doing some research into this case, which most people have heard of. Uh, under a headline, like I heard on NPR this morning, that basically said it's the lead line said that the uh, Alabama Supreme Court declared that embryos are children. And um, and so I actually got a little zany about it. I read several different news sources, crazy me. Then I decided to read the actual opinion written by the Supreme Court. I did not read all of the concurring opinions or partially concurring opinions. It was like, I think, a seven to one decision uh, by the Alabama Supreme Court. But I did read the court's uh, main opinion. And uh, Stephen Green, I find it interesting. Uh, first of all, the, the court did not declare embryos uh, to be children. Um, the, uh, the court did not declare that the destruction of embryos was a crime. Uh, the court did not restrict in vitro fertilization procedures. And, uh, and the upshot of it is... <laughs> I'll give you a brief background on the case. Um, there's a clinic in a hospital. A patient at that hospital somehow wanders into this place where they store uh, in vitro fertilization embryos. These embryos are created essentially in a petri dish and then and then frozen uh, at a certain stage of development so that they can be implanted later. Anyway, patient at the hospital wanders in there, manages to open up one of these containers and take out some of the embryos. They were so cold, however, the freezer burn caused the patient to drop them, the embryos hit the floor, and they die. So oh. the case was a lawsuit by several of the parents of those uh, children um, against the clinic and against the hospital, uh, basically saying, you you killed our babies. And they sued under the uh, a, a constitution, I'm sorry, a, um, a law from 1872 called the uh, wrongful... A death of a minor act, I believe, if I'm quoting that correctly, and basically said that their their children were killed and therefore they should be able to sue for punitive damages. That's what the 1872 Act said, that they could sue for punitive damages. Uh, Steve, that's the case that the court ruled on. There was no decision having to do with criminal liability because the court was not asked to decide on criminal liability. And, and, and it was, it was a, a civil, civil suit. suit. Um, there was no uh, yeah. restriction by the court on IVF procedures. And the court did not say that embryos are children. The law already said that. That that's a long standing position of the law that the that, that pre born or unborn children are children. Um, and so not only does the 1872 Act support that, but court decisions since support that. The Alabama Constitution supports that. Most dictionaries support that. Common English usage supports that. <laughs> so what they really said was, we are not going to make an exception to the 1872 Act to set apart um, embryos that are outside of the womb. And that's what they were being asked to do. Basically, the, the defendant said, let's make an exception and say that if the embryo is not in the womb, it's not a person. It's not a child. Um, Steve, part of me just wants to throw up my hands and go, why do I spend any time at all reading or listening to news? Why don't I just go to primary documents every time? Uh, yeah. And then the second kind of question for you yeah. is like, how do you overcome this wave of uh, knee-jerk response and misreporting that leads people to believe that something has fundamentally changed in Alabama when nothing has fundamentally changed. Yeah, there are a couple of things going on here. Um, and wow, Scott, this is one of those stories, before I get to the, the couple of things, this is one of those stories I hadn't gotten past the headlines yet. Uh, I was busy writing about my own stuff, and this is this is not uh, uh, one of the areas of the news I, I write about it over at Instapunnet or at PJ Media very often. So I got into the headlines, and my first thought, seeing all these these scary headlines about, oh, Alabama court decides, you know, scary anti-abortion yeah. things, that, that's what the headlines were all, were all hinting at. Uh, my first thought was, well, how are they lying to me now? I mean, this this was literally my, my thought, and I hadn't had time to get into it, which is why I was so glad you gave us this 
this thoughtful introduction to this segment because that's how, oh, this is how they were lying to me. Now, now I get it. This, they're, they're, the, the scary headlines are completely drummed up. And they're doing this for exactly two reasons. The first, of course, obvious. Uh, it's an election year. You, you got to drum up the suburban women to show up to vote for, uh, for uh, Puddin' Brain in November and, and all of that good stuff. And, and he's already by, made statements about this. By scaring them on, on anti-abortion stuff. And it, it, exactly. Of course, he, of course he has. Well, he, he uttered words that were in front of him on the teleprompter with those beady little eyes that he has left. And he, you know, he does this and he kind of mumbles his way through. Um, and and the other thing is the uh, mm. the mainstream uh, you, media you loves these territory. stories when they come from places like Alabama. Leave cause... a little meat on the bone for Bill there. <laughs> oh, yeah, because it. I I will I I will just say this: it allows our betters in places like New York and D.C. <laughs> to do this. Bill, I want I want to yeah. read you a little bit from the court decision of these knuckle-dragging uh, Supreme Court justice, justices in Alabama. And, and I'm quoting here um, at length. I'll tell you when I'm uh, leaving parts out. Um, this court has long held that unborn children are children for the purposes of Alabama's wrongful death of a minor act. And then there's a, I left a little bit out, a statute that allows uh, parents of deceased children to recover punitive damages for their child's death. That's the purpose of the statute. The central question, again, leaving a little snippet out, is whether uh, the act, meaning the wrongful death of a minor uh, act, contains an unwritten exception to that rule for the for extra uterine children, that is, unborn children who are located outside of the biological uterus at the time they are killed. Under, under existing black letter law, the answer to that question is no. The act applies to all unborn children, regardless of their location. Bill, does that seem like some zany, primitive, tribal, lunkhead, idiot ruling by slow Southern racists? This entire exercise to me sounds like one of the most tightly reasoned and contained judicial opinions I've heard since we've been doing the show. I mean, this sounds exactly precisely what a court is supposed to do. It's not legislating from the bench. It's not, it's not adding anything to the order. It's making an extraordinarily specific ruling on a, on a, on a law and, and, and and that's it so yeah so i mean you guys have both gotten the same vibe that i've gotten i was going to ask you uh prior to steve uh open his big yap and stealing my (laughs) my my my, my line i was going to ask you scott what what part of that headline do you think is the is the most (laughs) operative word in the headline of you know alabama rules of fetuses and so on i was hoping you'd say embryos it's not it's alabama um, yeah, yeah. The, the 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 amount of racism on the part of these these New York blue bloods is really quite astonishing. But but nothing. The only group of, of Americans that you're allowed to openly mock at any time of the day or night are, are white Southerners, especially Alabama. Um, Alabama's had a few problems re integrating into the norms of the Union, but but I lived <laughs> in the South for no, well, they did. They they were a little late to the party in terms of civil rights because they were governed by Democrats for so long. It's not their fault. Well, it is their fault. Um, yeah. But as a, as a person who lived in the South, well, Gainesville, Florida is north of Miami, so technically it's in the South. But still, even if you live in Florida, you got to drive north to get to the South. Um, <laughs> but in any event, I found them to be extraordinarily caring and compassionate people, very kind, very smart. The accent is is what gives everybody the idea that these are a bunch of knuckle-dragging apes. And to your point... As I mentioned a moment ago, this Supreme Court ruling in Alabama is so precisely reasoned, it's so tightly reasoned, it's so intellectually airtight that to mock it and to – let me see if I can back this up again. These idiot Southerners from Alabama have produced a court ruling that is so precisely intellectually, judicially, and morally correct – that that is not the story whatsoever. We have to completely invent something in order to put words into their mouth that they did not say, and not just for the that the, the court of Alabama didn't say, but that the people of Alabama didn't say, and that the entire South didn't say. So so let's do all of that. And I'll only come to the same conclusion I get when people 
do this to me, or they probably do it to you. They do it to a lot of conservatives. They say, they, they accuse me, they go after me for saying something that I didn't say. Yeah. And, and, my, and my response to this is always, well, if you have to invent something awful that I said, because you can't find anything real that I said that's awful, maybe you ought to revise your opinion of me, but that's not how this thing works. No, it's a question of, we know he's evil, we know they're evil, and if it, if it turns out we can't find any evidence that they're evil, then we will manufacture the evidence that they're evil in order to prove what we already know based on the evidence that we do not have and cannot obtain. I, I guess what I get from this case, and, I, and I, I've done this many times, you know, because I have this, this weird idea that the real lesson I learned in college is that there are primary documents to which one can repair to find what was originally said. <laughs> this was what drove my uh, research into the Constitution and the reading of the Federalist Papers and, and, and all of this. And this is what drives me today. Because like Steve, when you read the headline, your instinct should immediately be, okay, what, it, what are they lying about here? What is not true? And, and and after I had already done all this reading, then I went and took a shower and was listening to NPR, and they said uh, they declared an embryo to be a child. Well, this is from the court decision itself. Again, quoting here, all parties to this case, uh, the plaintiffs and the defendants, all parties agree that an unborn child is a genetically unique human being whose life begins at fertilization and ends at death. The question on which the parties disagree is whether there exists an unwritten exception to the rule for unborn children who are not physically located in utero at the time they are killed. The defendants, the hospital and the clinic, argue that an unborn child ceases to qualify as a child or person if that child is not contained within a biological womb. That's what the case was about. No parents are suddenly at risk here. In fact, this act protects the right of parents to sue for punitive damages for the loss of their own children. So this absurdity that suddenly a woman's right is being threatened here, in reality, the clinics and hospitals who are storing uh, these IVF embryos, uh, and by the way, I should have said this at the top, the estimate is currently that in the United States, the number of cryogenically preserved embryos is somewhere between 1 million and 5 million. And the parents get to decide whether they want the unused embryos to be discarded, whether they want them to be donated to science for research, or whether they want them to be donated to other couples who are seeking to have babies. Um, Go with that one. And this, yeah, why not? I mean, this is this, the same people who are telling us that we need to guarantee a woman's right to kill her baby are now all up in arms that women who are trying not to have their babies killed uh, may be threatened in some way. In any case, the central question to the case could be settled by this follow-up question. If a child outside of the womb is not a child or a person then what happens when you implant that embryo into a uterus? Does the entity that was not a child suddenly become a child? And if it is now a child because it's in a womb, what was it before? And if you start to, to untangle that question, you'll realize the absurdity of the people who are claiming this case was something that it was not. The opinion is not that long to read. Download a copy of it for yourself, read it for yourself, and equip yourself with the primary knowledge and see, frankly, how a Supreme Court justice can actually apply the text of the law to an actual case without expanding upon it and decide on the narrow basis of the plea from the plaintiffs. For Bill Whittle and Stephen Green, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks to the members at BillWhittle.com for making Right Angle possible.